Welcome back to Thesis Pending. I'm Jules, I am a PhD student, and I'm very, very close to finishing now. Oh, it's so close, I can just, I can almost reach it. So as you know, if you've been watching this series, I have handed in my PhD thesis, it is submitted for assessment, and I finally have a date for my Viva. Yes, <laughs> it's sometimes called a thesis defence, we generally refer to it as a Viva in the UK, or Viva Voca, Latin. That is soon, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, because I think that if on the day of I got a load of messages on Twitter or something, like wishing me luck, that'll probably stress me out. So it's soon, but I'm not going to say when. So I need to whip out the old thesis again and reread it, because I don't remember what I said when I wrote that months ago. I need to refresh my memory. <laughs> but um, hopefully I won't need to spend too much time preparing for it, it'll just be read through and remind myself of where I think the weaknesses are, anything I want to bring up in it, and prepare myself for the kinds of questions I'm probably going to be asked. After the Viva I will definitely do a video talking about how that is, because I feel like I'm going into this fairly blind. Um, I've had some general comments from friends who've already done their Viva, and most people are saying it's not that bad, it's not like an exam, it's more like the final editorial meeting for a book, it's checking everything is correct, maybe bringing up some mistakes that you've made, but in a kind of how can we fix this so that you can finish way rather than you've done this wrong and you're terrible. So I don't think it's gonna be too bad, I'm not too stressed about it, which is surprising for me, but um, at the moment at least I'm feeling alright. <laughs> But what I wanted to talk about today is not that, it is being sponsored by a company, a corporation, some kind of external influence while doing a PhD and what that is like. So for my PhD I had two funding sources, the first of which is a research council. This is quite a common way for people to fund a PhD in the UK. There are a few different research councils that hand out grants that are all, I think they're all very similar for across the different councils, the amount of money you get and the terms and conditions associated with that, of which there are very few. Um, so I was sponsored by the EPSRC, the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, that was the majority of my funding. But I did also have a, I think it was called a studentship, but it was a sponsorship sort of deal with the Ordnance Survey, which is the UK's main mapping agency. So what did I get from having this uh, extra studentship? Well, money was one thing, I got an extra couple of thousand pounds a year, which really helps. The money you get from the research councils is very good, but it's basically gonna be equivalent to minimum wage. So you can get by on it, it's okay, but you're not gonna have any spare cash. This meant that I was able to not stress about money so much, and that was very nice. I also had some extra expenses funding from them, so the university provided us a couple of hundred pounds a year as PhD students for travel expenses for conferences, um, anything that you might need to buy to run studies, um, like for example I handed out Amazon vouchers as an incentive for people to take part in my research, so that kind of covers that sort of thing, but from the Ordnance Survey I got extra money to do that sort of thing alongside what I got from the university. I didn't use all of it, um, some people say I should have just bought some equipment I didn't need just to use the money, because if you don't use it, it just disappears, you don't get that, the university doesn't get it, it's just kind of... But I didn't need it, I didn't know what else to, you know, spend the money on, so I just didn't, so... Oh well. Maybe I should have just uh, picked a conference on the other side of the world and just done that. <laughs> so what else did I get from it? Uh, resources and contacts, which is a big thing. Uh, the Ordnance Survey has a heck of a lot of mapping data available to them, and by having a link with them I was able to access a lot of stuff that would be more difficult for somebody else. So that was very good. I got an awful lot of mapping data that I used in my studies, which was very helpful. And also I met with quite a few people at the Ordnance Survey who I talked through what I was doing, and it helps to have different inputs other than just your own thoughts and your supervisor sometimes. And I know some people in that industry now if I was interested in going into that, and I probably am not, but I do know the people, so that helps, you know. Networking. Another thing I got out of the deal was being able to spend some time at the Ordnance Survey at their headquarters in Southampton and meet with people, spend extended periods of time there. I could do up to three months, I think it was, across my PhD over the years of it. Um, I didn't use all that time, I used a couple of weeks probably, but um, yeah, that was, that was another thing that I could do. And the last thing is the annual PhD student workshop, which is something that I really enjoy, and unfortunately I couldn't go to several years of this for various reasons, um, but I have gone to a few of them, and the most recent one was back in March. I recorded some footage, so I thought I would talk you through that experience a little bit. So their PhD workshop day is designed so that all the different PhD students, or as many of them as possible anyway, come together at the headquarters for the Ordnance Survey, 
and meet to talk about their research and discuss it with each other, present to the ordnance survey, have kind of just a, a day of just thinking about what we're doing for our research. So there's people there from loads of different universities around the UK that they sponsor and um, yeah, it's a good time. It's a little bit stressful because it does require doing a fair bit of presenting to a room full of people, which even for someone who's used to talking to camera and presenting my thoughts a lot, it's a bit intimidating when there's just a room full of people. And then one that they, they made an attempt but went in a different direction, made various uh, incorrect judgments on the turnings that were made and didn't include many landmarks at all. So people who use Google Maps did tend to make less accurate, less detailed maps. Partly this could be that obviously the symbols that I designed encourage people to pay more attention to those mm. specific symbols. Uh, whereas Google Maps didn't draw attention to them. But equally, if Google Maps isn't drawing attention to landmarks that are useful for building up survey knowledge, then that is a problem. I'm not great at public speaking. It's not too bad, especially when you're talking about something you know a lot about. I think that's a nice thing with doing this kind of presentation. I am talking about something I've spent years working on. I know my stuff. It's fine. So it's just remembering what I wanted to say and saying it in eloquent fashion. So each of us would give a short presentation. The whole uh, workshop is over two days, so there's quite a few of us giving 10-15 minute presentations throughout the day with gaps at lunch and a couple of other breaks to stand around on the little foyer area with our posters that we've also made. So the idea is that members of the audience survey, staff members, can come around and find out about the research that's going on. The first one of these I did was, oh, 2014, I guess? At the very start of 2014. Uh, it was at the beginning of my PhD. I had been working on it for maybe two months at this point. So I did a very vague presentation about some ideas that I had and the sort of methodologies I might use. Whereas this time I had a 15 minute slot to talk about all of my PhD and that's not really doable. So <laughs> um, it's interesting trying to give a quick summary of your work and what you've done, not going into too much detail, but also explaining things properly. It's definitely a skill. I'm not sure it's one I've mastered, but it's definitely one that I'm reasonable at. So hopefully the next video in this series will be me saying, pass my viva, I've just got to do a few corrections and then I'm done. Um, I, I Hopefully I'll be able to bring that to you fairly soon. So. Thank you so much for sticking with this series. It honestly has been really helpful, like seeing how people are also going through the process and leaving comments about um, their, their PhD experience and the videos that I've done when I was not having a great time of it, everyone's been really supportive and I'm just, I'm really grateful to everyone who watches this series. You've, you've really got me through this, so thank you. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully see you soon with some really good news, so.